TrainerTest.com provides practice exams for the VMware VCP with this and many other embedded videos. Go to TrainerTests.com and try a free demo today. In this video, I'm going to talk about vSphere's fault tolerance feature. And we're going to go over some of the big changes that have happened with fault tolerance as of vSphere 6. It's much different than it used to be. But it still provides the same basic function is 100% uptime for our critical virtual machines. This is different than high availability. HA doesn't give us 100% uptime. Fault tolerance does. The other thing that it now provides though as of vSphere 6 is there's going to be zero data loss. No loss of data transactions or connections. Now how fault tolerance works is you're going to enable it on one virtual machine at a time and that primary virtual machine is going to be protected by mirroring it to an identical virtual machine that runs on another host. This ensures that these two virtual machines are kept exactly identical through a mechanism called checkpointing. So now if we have an ESXi host failure and the primary virtual machine fails the secondary virtual machine will immediately take over and that secondary will become the primary and a new secondary will be spawned to reprotect that virtual machine. As of vSphere 6 another component of protection has been added. A secondary data store can be selected to store the files for that secondary virtual machine. So now we can even tolerate a data store failure as well. Now fault tolerance hasn't been all that widely deployed in the past because of some of the limitations. And the biggest limitation is that it only supported virtual machines that had a single virtual CPU. Those limitations have been removed with vSphere 6. Fault Tolerance now supports virtual machines with up to two virtual CPUs on the standard edition and up to four virtual CPUs on the Enterprise Plus edition. And it also supports vMotion of both the primary and secondary virtual machines. Another big advance with vSphere 6 is that thin provision disks are now supported. Prior to vSphere 6, our virtual machine had to have thick provisioned eager zero disks that's no longer the case. In order to enable fault tolerance we have to have an HA cluster configured and we have to have enhanced vMotion compatibility enabled on that cluster. So let's take a look at how fault tolerance works. Now on the left hand side we have our primary virtual machine. This is the virtual machine that we want to protect and its files are located on a data store. Now step one to enabling fault tolerance is to create a fault tolerance logging network. We're going to do that using VM kernel ports. And this network is going to be used to kind of keep that secondary VM exactly the same as the primary VM. Then we enable fault tolerance on that primary virtual machine and a secondary virtual machine is created. And as we're configuring fault tolerance, we can choose a data store where a copy of that virtual machine's files will reside. In this case, we've chosen to create that copy on a secondary data store. So now we have a primary and a secondary virtual machine, and we also have a copy of the data on two different data stores. And as changes happen on the first virtual machine, they're going to be copied over to the secondary virtual machine using this fault tolerance logging network to keep those two VMs exactly the same. So let's walk through a host failure situation and review exactly what happens here. Now we can see our primary virtual machine is running on host ESXi01 and its files are located on one data store and, and the secondary VM is running on ESXi02 and those files are located on a second data store. So if host ESXi01 fails, that primary virtual machine is going to fail along with it. But the secondary will immediately take over and it'll become the primary virtual machine. 
And what will then happen is a new secondary virtual machine will be spawned on another host to reprotect that VM. How about a failure at the guest operating system level? Let's say, for example, we have Windows running on this VM and we get the Windows blue screen of death. What do you think is going to happen in that situation? Well, what's going to happen is that exact same problem is going to be replicated over the fault tolerance logging network and the secondary VM is going to be in the exact same situation. Its instance of Windows will have the blue screen of death as well. So it doesn't protect you from problems that occur at the operating system level. But if the entire VM fails, or if the ESXi host fails, we're going to fail over immediately to that secondary VM. So in review, in this lesson we learned about fault tolerance. This is one of our reliability features with vSphere. Uh, and it kind of goes hand in hand with high availability. Right? They both serve a similar purpose, but high availability involves downtime. Right? High availability requires virtual machines to boot up on other hosts. Fault tolerance isn't like that. Fault tolerance actually keeps a secondary virtual machine and a secondary copy of the virtual machine's files. So now if we have a host failure, it's an immediate failover to the secondary without that downtime, and a new secondary will be respawned to reprotect what is now our primary VM. As of vSphere 6, we can support virtual machines with up to four virtual CPUs on fault tolerance, but we still have some limitations. You can still only have a maximum of four fault tolerant virtual machines running on a single host. As of vSphere 6, we're also going to support thin provisioned disks, not just thick provisioned. And again, we have to enable HA and enhance vMotion compatibility on our cluster in order to enable fault tolerance. To learn more about these concepts and to prepare for your VCP exam, go to www.trainertests.com. These practice exams include this and many other embedded videos. And you can try a free demo. There's a 100% money back guarantee. And it has over 170 questions. And as you answer those questions at the end of the exam, it'll tie them all to the exam blueprint and show you which areas you need to work on. So there's really no better way to prepare for the VCP6 exam then to go to www.trainertests.com and try one of our practice exams.